Hey, it's Rainiac Smell, the trade tutor, back in the studio and back with another Let's Make tutorial for you. Now, in this Let's Make, so we're looking at how to make improvised fighting defensive positions. Specifically, we're going to be looking at breastworks, which are like an embankment, slit trenches or rifle trenches, and dugouts and emplacements. So with that in mind, let's head over to the bench and get cracked on, eh? Come on! Right, defensive positions. We're going to make three types of defensive positions, yeah? We're going to do breastworks, we're going to do a slit trench or a rifle trench, and we're going to do a dugout or an emplacement. Now, as scatter pieces, we have to build up embankments on these, yeah? If I was doing a fully featured board, I'd simply dig into the board, but you can't do that with scatter pieces. But we need to represent the, the fact that there are actually holes in the ground. Well, these two are anyway. This is a man-made built up. And so what we do is we use foam, yeah, to give us our embankments. Now, typically, I would use high-density foam and I would use hot wire tools for doing this job, yeah, but I'm not going to. I'm using expanded polystyrene, the bobbly stuff, yeah, and I'm just using a sharp knife and a bit of fine sandpaper. Now, the reason for this is, yeah, high-density foam can be difficult to get hold of, hot wire tools can be expensive, but you know, most of you should have these and most of you should be able to get your hands on this. So if I can do it with this and you can do it with this, you can do it with the high density stuff. So what the first job is, as you can see, I've already done my bases and I've beveled them down. They're EPVC, yeah, expanded PVC, which is our preferred basing material. Now, when it comes to actually cutting these things, obviously you can see I've got my basic block. Yeah, I've got where my trench is, is roughly going to be. Yeah, but I need to shape the embankments. Now on this, if you notice, it's slightly narrower, yeah, towards the back of the trench, this is the front, than it is at the front. I want a more graduated slope at the front, whereas at the back it doesn't matter so much because it's your table side, if you know where I'm at. It's, it's not facing the enemy, yeah? Now, when it comes to cutting this stuff, it's dead easy. All you've got to do is avoid dragging, yeah? So, no really steep horizontal cutting, cutting yeah? You've got to come in nice and soft, yeah? And... A sort of sawing motion. So if I get that like that, yeah, and I cut there, and I'm going from one corner to the edge of where I want my trench. Don't rush it. What I end up with is a beautiful clean cut. So don't let anyone tell you that you can't cleanly cut this stuff, because you can. Yeah, now I need to do a few more other cuts on this. Yeah, I'm going to bevel that one off. I'm going to bevel that off. Yeah, and once we've got that done, we'll do a little bit more. Yeah, so I'm going to do that quickly. So there we have it. Yeah, you can see I've just beveled all the sides with my blade. Now, obviously, we've got these sharp bits. So what I want to do is just very gently just take those off and take the corner off. Yeah, watch your fingers on this. Right, that's all beveled off now, and we've still got a couple of reasonably sh sharp lines. So very gently, with very fine sandpaper, I'm just going to give it a quick rub over on those edges. There we go. Okay, now the next job is obviously you're screaming, well, you've got to cut that out. Yes, I have. Now, here's the trick. You don't have to cut it out and keep this solid. What you can do is... Yeah, cut that one off, and all I'm going to do is cut that one off, that one off, and then cut that one off, okay? Right, so there you have it, all the pieces, yeah, don't worry, I know they're not lined up perfectly, they will once we put them on the base. Now, one last thing is, you've got a very fragile edge here, yeah, so I'm just going to take off about 4 mil. yeah, just to flatten that off. Yeah, which will it'll help it when we start covering it over. Yeah, so I've just taken that off and I'm going to do the same on all of those. Yeah, right, that's it all beveled off. Yeah, next job, I need to glue it onto my base. Yeah, and for this, I'm just using a little bit of PVA, which will work perfectly fine. I'm just going to run a, a little bit around here, line them up, get them all perfect, and then just put a blob of PVA in between where these joins are. Yeah, so it all joins back together nice and solid. So I'll bring it back once that's done. And there you have it, all glued on. And looking beautiful. How easy is that? Just some simple cutting, yeah? And it's just being smart about your cutting by cutting it in sections to get the middle bit out, beveling that little edge off to give you that lovely little sort of top bit where you would rest your rifles on, etc. I've 
if you've ever been, if you've ever done any, anyone who's done any military service will tell you pretty much every day's sort of field exercise, end of marching, yeah, ends with digging one of these, yeah. So, grave technicians. Right, breastworks. Now, what's a breastwork? A breastwork is essentially a pile of earth piled up as a firing position up to the height of a man, up to the height of a of the breast on a man, yeah, and it's buttressed on one side. Now to do this, all we're going to do is with this one, we're going to take that little bit off and then a little bit off the top, okay? And then just smooth around the sides, much like we did with this. And then with this one, we're basically going to do this, but on a much larger scale, so the slopes will be more graduated, yeah? Right, I'll get cracked on, I'll get these shaped up and glued down, we'll come back when they're done. So there we are, all shaped up. We've got our slit trench, our two-man slit trench. Yeah, and it's looking rather nice. I know the white isn't showing up brilliantly on this video, but hey -ho. Yeah, we've got our breastwork. Yeah, and obviously these can be long continuations. You can make them modular if you want. All you've got to do is bring them right to the end and make sure that you use a template, yeah, so that every end matches. And then finally, we've got our sort of dugout emplacement. And, you know, I've decided a communication trench at the back of that. It's all glued down. What we need to do now is, if I, you look at it very closely, you can see, yeah, the pittedness. Yeah, that comes with using expanded polystyrene. The other issue is, it's quite soft. Yeah, and we need to toughen that up. So, for that purpose, yeah, I've got filler. Bog standard filler. In the US, you'll call it spackle. Yeah, crack filling compound. And all I'm going to do is get some on my finger. I'm just going to rub it in like that. I'm not looking to put a thick coat on it. All I'm looking to do is get a basic coat on it and fill in those gaps. I'm going to blend these lines as well. Yeah, and basically smooth it all out. So I'm going to crack on with that now and I'll bring them back once they're done. So that's all our pieces filled up. And if I bring it up, yeah, you can see how I've blended in all the edges with a bit of filler, filled in all those gaps. I've stippled the interior. Yeah, and it does look like a solid mound now, yeah? So, we're well on the way. Yeah, same with the, the breast works. I just don't want to rub the filler off, yeah? Nice and easy, just smoothed it on, blend in the transitions, and it's all good to go. And then finally, our little trench, try not to get it on my fingers, because it's still wet. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Our little slit trench is coming together lovely. Now, the next job I've got to do is simply let these dry, and this will all firm up, it'll hold it all together, and then it's down to the gritting, painting, and all that sort of palaver. Yeah, but that is the essentials of getting these sort of structures done. Remember, you can use hard foam, you can use hot tools, but you can do it with expanded polystyrene and, you know, just a blade. Right, let's leave these to dry, and we'll come back once they are. Right, the filler's all dry now, and as you can see, we've blended in those edges. We've got a lovely, tough texture for our emplacement. Yeah, and it's the same on our slit trench. Yeah. I am bothered what you the filler in on the inside. I didn't think I'd, I'd bother with that one. Yeah, and our breast works. Yeah, all nice and hard. Yeah. Next job we need to do is to sort the buttressing and sort the supports. Now, slit trenches, they were typically just dug into the ground. Yeah, I never put any supports in any of mine. Yeah, so we're not going to worry about it with those. But with the breastworks, because the breastworks is essentially a pile of earth mounded up, yeah, to get a, a sharp shooting position, yeah, they would buttress it. And to do this, all I've got is I've got some coffee stirrers. Yeah, I've, I've sort of laid them out and trimmed them down to size, and then I've super glued with gel super glue a couple of snippets of what you call it, a uh, barbecue skewer. Okay, I made that. And all I'm going to do is, with a bit of PVA, yeah, I'm just going to glue it onto there. Okay, and that will provide the support for the back of our buttress, for the back of our breastworks. Yeah? Okay, right, when it comes to the actual and placement, what I'm doing is I'm falling back to my tried and tested and my favorite corrugated cardboard. Now you can get, uh, what you call it, sort of corrugated, the brown cardboard, and you can soak one side of it and peel it off, but it's a right pain in the backside, yeah, to be perfectly honest. You can buy these, this cardboard and it's corrugated, and if I bring it right up, you can see that it's two layers. Focus, damn you, focus. That's it, yeah, that's it. It's two layers 
one flat layer and then one corrugated layer. Yeah, which makes it perfect for projects like this. They come in A4 sheets and you get about 10 sheets to a one pound pack. And all I've done is I basically laid it inside there. Yeah, made it fit all the corners and then drawn round it with a pen. So literally just gone along as I've held it in with my pen and drawn around it. And that's going to give me that. Now, all I need to do now is a pair of scissors. And there we go. Right, next job, all we're going to do is, with a bit of PVA, we're just going to glue that into there. Yeah, so it'll go from there, around to there, around there. Come on, in you go. There you go. Yeah, around there, around into that corner. And then back out to there. Okay, dead simple. Really simple, really easy. Yeah, once it's glued in, we'll just come along and I'll, with a bit more glue, I'm just going to get these little cuts of barbecue skewer and I'm just going to use those as sort of like the buttress steaks. Buttresses, they're not buttress steaks. Yeah, so that's the next job. I better crack on. So they're glued on now. And you can see the buttresses on there. Lovely, isn't it? Yeah. And then if we come over to our dugout, our emplacement, yeah, you can see the cardboard's gone in. It's stuck. It'll need to fully dry. Yeah, and then my barbecue skewers. And it looks lovely. Right, next job is we need to add some sandbags to this. So what I've got here is I've got some desk modeling putty. Now we have done a video on sandbag emplacements and trenches. It's in the Let's Make. So get, go check it out if you want a more in-depth guide to sandbags. But dead simple. Yeah, I've rolled out this desk modeling putty, which is air drying clay, to about 5mm. I'm then going to come along and I'm just going to tap it down till it's about 8mm wide. Yeah, I'm then going to get something like this and just come along, take off the end and put in my little sandbag indents. Yeah, just like that. And then I'm going to come in at the side, just pinch them in at the side as well. Yeah, and if I bring it up, yeah, you can see sandbags. And all I'm going to do is repeat this and I'm going to lay sandbags and the idea is I want them to hide, yeah, do you see the gap in between where I've got my cardboard, there you go, and my watch up polystyrene, they're just going to cover over that gap for me, okay, so I'm going to knock a few of these together, I'll throw a couple on this and a couple on these as well, yeah, so I'll get cracked on. Right, I've got those sandbagged up, and if we bring them up, see, I've kept them really simple and easy, I didn't want to spend too much time on them, because we've covered sandbags in the past in that sandbag and sanger video. Yeah, uh, so they're done, and then I've just thrown a few on there because it's it's sort of an infantry position, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Now the next job I need to do is I need to do a bit of gritting. So I've got the base in here that I need to grit. Yeah, I'm also going to put a bit of grit just around the edge of this. Okay, and then on this one, yeah, I'm going to put a bit of grit on there, and I'm going to put a bit a grit along here as well. Okay, so how to do that? Dead simple. Yeah, got my PVA. Yeah, I've got basically a mixed grit, but I'm just gritted, tiny stones, you know, and very fine sand. Okay, and all I'm going to do is a bit of PVA. Yeah, with my brush. Yeah, I'm going to layer it down. Yeah, so I can control where it's going. I don't like to say I don't I want to take it up to the edge of the sandbags yeah but I don't want it to sort of go everywhere on this so I'm going to do it around here and then in here and then all I'm going to do is sprinkle some of that in it's gonna look beautiful back in a sec right I've got my PVA on it and it's time to start sprinkling yeah so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some of this out yeah so I can easily get at it yeah, I don't want any of the big rocks that sort of mixed in with it. And all I'm going to do yeah, is just sprinkle it just around the top. Now, like I say, I only put PVA just around the edges. Yeah, so it's not going to stick everywhere. Yeah, just where I want it to. Well, that's the idea anyway. You know, you know how terrain goes. It can always throw you a curveball. Yeah, around there. Yeah, a bit in there, and then we just need to do the centre. 
Okay, now this will become important once we actually start painting and flocking it up, but I think you'll guess well it, why we have Of course, you could just grit the lot of it if you wanted. There's no reason why not. Yeah, and perhaps I should have, but, you know, it's looking good, isn't it? I've still missed bits. We'll hide it with a tuft or something. Don't worry. We'll figure it. Right, next job. I've got to do the same with this, and we may do a little with this. I'm not sure yet. I'll crack on. Right, all gritted up and dried. Yeah. Looks brilliant, doesn't it? Right, we're at the painting stage now. Okay, and for the painting, what we're going to be doing is brown house paint. Yeah, interior wall paint, latex paint if you're in the US. This has been slightly thinned down. Yeah, so I'm going to drop a good blob there. Yeah, and then on top of that, I've got just a bit of standard PVA. Yeah, and I'm going to put about that much in. About a sixth, yeah, and that's just going to help when we we paint it all down. Yeah, that's just going to help grit all the hold these in place, so I don't have to seal it then paint it. Okay, it's, we're sort of doing it in in what you call it in one stage. So give that a mix. And then it is just a matter of painting it on, guys. So you know, get your piece, get your brush, and you put some paint on it. It's easy, there's some terrain malarkey in it. Right, I'll get these all base coated up and then we'll come back when they're dry for, you know, detailing and that sort of stuff. Right, there they are, they're all base coated now and they're looking rather nice. Okay, there's a couple of jobs that we've got to do on them. I want to dry brush the earth, so I'm going to be using a brown and a bit of watch good beige just to lighten it up for a final highlight. Yeah, I want to be painting the sandbags on this piece and this piece with an okra. Yeah, we've covered sandbags in the past. There's a video on how you know how we how you can paint them up, loads of different ways. But I'm going to be using this for that. Yeah, and then finally for my metal. Yeah, my what you call it, my buttressing. I'm going to go for like a military green, so a catching green for that one. Yeah, any sort of olive drab or any you know you can do them red. You can do them any colour to be perfectly honest. You know, but that's what the colours I'm going to do these. So it is just a simple matter of getting me drip paintbrush out and getting these painted up, guys. So. I'll get cracked on with that. There we go. It's amazing what a little base coating of dry brushes will do, won't it? Okay, so if I bring these up now, as you can see, all we've done is we've painted these with our catch and green. Yeah, we've given these a base coat of our ochre colour. Yeah, our towel stepped ochre. And then we've dry brushed over them with a bit of house paint, cream to be precise, warm beige. Yeah, and it did just come up like lovely sandbags. I've left those dry and just give them a quick dry brush of a lighter brown. Yeah, and then just dry brush just around this edge. Yeah, and if we look at these, this has been done much exactly the same. Yeah, our little dugout, our slip trench and our breastworks. Yeah, I've given the wood a, a quick little dry brush just to get some of the, the shades on it. Yeah, and that's a bit rough and ready. I should have really gritted those like I did with that, with these, but, you know, hey. <laughs> hey ho. <laughs> Wouldn't be one of my tutorials without a cock up, would it? Right, now we're onto the stage where we're, we're essentially flocking things up. Okay, now, simple matter. I have, just like all the other Battlefield Basics, I've got my standard mid-tone. I've got two shades here, a light one and a dark one. I'm going to use the light towards the edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this sort of PVA'd up. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll come back when it's all PVA'd and ready to flock so I can show you what I'm going to do just to sort of, because these would be sort of earthy embankments rather than all grass, you know what I mean? So I'll show you that as well. Right, I've got my PVA glue on, yeah, and what I've done is I've gone about three quarters of the way up, yeah, and then I've just sort of occasionally stippled a few bits towards the sort of last quarter. Yeah, and this is because this is gonna be broken earth around the top of that, so I don't want it to get a full covering. At the same time, it's probably gonna be more dried around towards the top. So, my three tones, yeah, mid-tone, light, shade. I get my light, and I'm just gonna sprinkle it across the top a bit. Yeah, because I just want that sort of broken ground effect, if you know what I mean. Not broken ground, sort of broken grass effect. Yeah. I don't want to go too heavy with it. Uh, a couple of sort of hot spots. Yeah, need to bring it round here. Can you see what I'm doing? Sorry, I'm concentrating on this and not looking at the video. How dare you concentrate on your terrain, Mel? How dare you? Yeah, so. 
blow off. Give it a good blow. Yeah. And that's our light on. Now I'm going to do the dark. Now the dark I just want to do just around the very edges. Okay, so if I bring this up here. Yeah, I'm sort of catching the overspill in the tub so I'm not making too much of a mess. I'm going to just do it along there. Well, it may have been a bit thick there. A little bit thick. Yeah, a bit there, a bit there, a bit there. Yeah, and a little bit along there. Yeah. So if I move those back. Yeah, and we get that. Okay, do you see where the, the dark bits are? And the next thing we need to do is just start sprinkling on a lighter mid-tone. Yeah, which will hopefully give us our, our actual ground effect. Start sprinkling, let's just dip it, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, looking good. Oh, miss a bit. Always miss a bit. Right, very quickly, you will always miss little bits like that. Here, let me show you. Yeah, do you see it? That bit there? Little things like that really annoy me. Yeah, a little bit of PBR on your brush. Yeah, just come along. You will get bits of flock on it, but don't worry. It's all sortable, see? Easy. Right, so let me show you end results. Let me give it a good blow. Yeah, if I bring it up. Look at that. I have to do that corner. I'll do that in a second. But do you see the toning works? Do you see the broken ground? Yeah, really easy peasy, guys. Really easy peasy. You've just watched me do it, haven't you? That's a bit strong there, isn't it? <laughs> just let me. There you go. That's a bit better. <laughs> right, I should do that. I'll do this, and then I'll do these other pieces, and we'll come back once these are edit, done, ready to add our clump foliage and that sort of stuff on, yeah? See you in a sec, guys. Right, they're all flocked up now, so if I just I'll give you a quick nose. Yeah. Right, lovely. Simple but beautiful, you know what I mean? Yeah, and then we've got our breastworks. Yeah, a bit of a lump at the minute, but once we get some clumps on that, yeah, that's going to come up lovely. Simple bit of dry brushing on the back, just get a bit of texture on it. You don't need to go absolutely fancy on these things, especially if you're making lots and lots of them. Yeah, and then finally, we've got our dugout or emplacement. Yeah, and you can see the sort of shading on it. It works really well. Yeah. I'll be honest with you guys, yeah, the paint job isn't perfect, but you know, you can probably do a much better paint job if you spend a little while longer on it. Yeah, it's I am show you the techniques. I'm a very sloppy terrain maker. Right, final thing to do is we just need to break up this up a bit. And so for that we're gonna do exactly the same as we've done in all our other Battlefield Basic series. We're gonna be adding clump foliage to it. Now for adding clump foliage, it is really simple. Yeah, I'm just gonna get a bit. Yeah. I've got a plate over here with a bit of PVA on. I'm going to dip it in the PVA. Yeah, come along and literally just push it on. Just like that. Yeah, bring that up so you can see. It's as simple as that. Now obviously I've got to do the rest of it and on top of that what we've got is we've got these grass tufts. So if I get these grass tufts, these are army painter, you can get from all over the place obviously. Yeah, and these are self adhesive, so I don't even have to put these into PVA. Yeah, and all I'm gonna do is come along and just drop them down. Yeah, just like that. Yeah. Okay, so all I need to do now is just work through this and get these clumped and, and glass foliaged up and then we'll come back once they're done, yeah? So there you have it guys, a little bit of clump foliage and a few tufts and it finishes them off perfectly. So, very quick run through, right let's have a look at our breastworks first. Yeah, so there's our breastworks. Yeah, and from the rear. Yeah. It's a bit fiddly told. I don't think the clumps are completely dry yet, so. Yeah, so that's our breastworks. Next up, we've got our slit trench or fire trench or grave. <laughs> yeah, that's quite lovely. 
could have beveled off that sort of hard edge a little bit better. I think that's a bit too sharp to be truthful. So if you do it, just take a blade and just edge it down a little. Yeah, or round it with sandbags the whole way round. But you can see what I've done with that, can't you? It looks beautiful. So two man fire trench. Yeah. And then finally, come on, pick up. Yeah, we've got a dugout or emplacement. Like I said, you know, not the best painting job. You can see where I've gone over with the sandbags in the corner, but a little bit of touching up and that'd be fine. Yeah, you can see the two-tone, the shading, the tufts work really well on that, actually. Yeah, if we bring it round. And so there you have it, guys. That's the techniques that you can use to easily make sort of in infantry improvised, what you call it, defensive firing positions. Yeah, I know them well. And I, I'm sure many of you guys will know, any of you guys who have served will, will know these at the end of each marching day. Yeah, so all that remains is they do need sealing with a little bit of watered down PVA. One part PVA to eight parts water. And just a thin coating just to hold it all down. So I'll do that when they're completely dry, but they're good enough to show you. So that's it guys, that wraps this up. Let's head up for the long shot, eh? So that's it guys, that wraps up this video on sort of improvised fighting defences. Uh, just to point out, obviously we've used expanded polystyrene here, we've used uh, blades and sandpaper rather than high density stuff and, and hot wire stuff. If you've got the high density stuff and the hot wire stuff, fill your boots. But if you haven't, you don't need it. You've seen what I've done with these, it is doable. Yeah, it's not that hard to be truthful, so just do it. Make some defences for your infantry. Get them those cover saves. So with that in mind, that wraps up this video, okay? Now, as always, guys, if you do like these videos and you do find them helpful, then I am constantly shouting out and appealing for people to support this. I'm reaching out to all you good folks who appreciate what I'm trying to do for the community. And I'm asking you, you know, just chip in, one dollar a month. And if you don't like the idea of it being sort of a, a donation and a charity thing, then think about it much like a subscription. Yeah, I do 100 plus videos a year, you know, $12 as a one-off subscription. That's not bad at all. So with that in mind, if you do want to support me, please consider jumping on the patron thing. Now on top of that, if you don't want to do the regular monthly thing, you can, there's a link below for what you like, one-off PayPal donations, and I do appreciate it. Obviously, if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe there, and what you call it, if you're looking for more Let's Make videos, yeah, they're on this side. And in the meantime, guys, I'd like to thank you for all your support, and remember, I'm gonna be coming back real soon with more tutorials. So, see you soon, guys. ta -da.